You're listening to Shift, Human First Financial Guidance with Ross Marino. Today, we are shifting the conversation with Gabrielle Welter from FAR. Hello, Gabrielle. Hi, Ross. Great to have you on the show today. It was great seeing you at Shift uh, along with Steve and Finance of America Reverse. Looking forward to having a conversation today because it's uh, one of the products, one of the solutions that are newer to our profession that that uh, I, I think are fascinating. I see so many different use cases. But before I dive in and geek out on that, why don't you take 60 seconds and tell everybody who you are? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I've been looking forward to this. So I work um, along with Steve Rush in the retirement strategies over at Finance of America Reverse. And we're like, we're a channel that's set up for advisors. So we're a resource when an advisor is thinking about, wants to learn more about a reverse mortgage, they can come to us. And we have the ability to educate on it, to run illustrations on hypothetically what it would look like. So that's what we're here for. I know in our profession, I, I see a lot of people talking about it. I also see advisors that don't talk about it at all. So I, I think I first started hearing about it from Jamie Hopkins, who's a big proponent of it and talks yeah. about how it fits into the financial plan. So you have some people like Jamie that they're passionate. And, and actually, one of my best friends has been in the reverse industry for years and years and years. He loves awesome. it. Bright guy, high integrity guy, absolutely loves what he does with it. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you got advisors that they don't even bring it up at all. So wh why do you think there's such a disparity out there? You know, I you're absolutely right. I see it all the time because Steve and I are on the, the financial advisor conference circuit. That's what we're doing is talking to people at, about the reverse mortgage. And I feel like what it, what it is, is you've got those that are still under that negative connotation, like old school, like I heard reverse mortgages, they're bad and they really haven't sat in on a session or done any reading, you know, to kind of update that thinking. And then you have those who have dabbled a little bit, maybe, they, maybe they've, you know, done a session, they, they've learned a little more and they, they know that they've heard that they're good, but they're still haven't been in a situation where they've actually applied them. And then you have the diehards. I want to shout it from the rooftops. They've seen them in action. You know, they've they've had a situation where they were able to utilize the reverse and see how it works. And and once you have that, once you've been through that process, it's it's like you're committed, you know, and you you do want to share it with others. It's it's kind of like the same as eating at a good restaurant. You want to tell everybody about it, especially if they thought it was a hole in the wall and bad to begin with, you know. So we we need more of them, more that have put it into use and, and can tell everybody else about it. Yeah, it makes me think about the zero to one movement. If you've never walked a client through it or had a client go through it, once you get to that one, the first person does it and you see the impact it has, you're going to have a, a different perspective. And actually, let, let's talk about that. So from a from a human first perspective, let's talk about the impact it has on someone when they're in a situation and they find a solution and they say, we're going to do a reverse mortgage. What, what does it provide for that consumer? So I started out as a loan originator. So I've, I've had the fortunate experience to sit at the kitchen table with a senior, you know, and see the process from start to finish. I don't function in that role anymore. It's my role is education um, now at Finance of America, but I have seen the, the impact from start to finish. And the biggest thing is really peace of mind. You know, usually the reverse mortgage, not usually, it always is solving a problem, an issue, whether it's super prevalent, you know, immediate need, or it's something that's that's foreseen a little bit down the road, it, it solves a problem. And so the biggest thing I think the takeaway that people get is that they're sleeping better at night, they've got peace of mind, you know, and, and again, too, obviously, they can stay in their home. Some people, that's the struggle. You know, they don't know how they're going to be able to afford to stay there. And if the reverse is utilized to, you know, help offset like a lack of long-term care solutions that's in place, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to be able to tap into my house and it's going to help work for me and fund me staying in my home. So it, it's really like a, a total 180 from 
uneasy trepidation, nervous going in to, wow, this feels really, really good. And that's what I loved about being a loan originator because when I was in that role, I mean, these people were my best friends afterwards. They were really grateful, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm on a coastal area in Wilmington, North Carolina, and the beach real estate has gone up dramatically over 10 or 20 years. And we see people that they have these properties. It is their home. And to them, it's not an asset. It's home. They, they don't want to leave. But over 20 years, the taxes have gone up, maintenance has gone up, and their income hasn't kept pace with it. And they have their home that, yes, if they would sell it, there would be a nice chunk of money. Right. Um, but, but it's their home. You know, they, they don't really want to want to leave it. So let's actually look at it from the advisor perspective. So let's say I had that person and they've got their condo on the beach and it's worth one or $2 million. And I know what they need. They need cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. They need it for living expenses or it could be medical care, taxes, whatever. I know that they need cash flow and I see they have equity out there. Well, as a financial advisor, I could say, well, we have one option, which is X, or the other option may be a reverse mortgage. What do you see as the X. What is the normal solution that an advisor would recommend if a reverse mortgage wasn't an option? And you're saying they want to stay in the home? They all want and, to stay and they in need the money. home. The right. most yeah. So what are they going to do? Yeah. Normally it's going to be either a HELOC or a cash out refi. And, and the disadvantage to both of those um, is, you know, HELOC's going to give you cash. It's going to give you access to, to money, but it's going to come with a payment, right? It's not, the payment's not optional, where with a reverse mortgage, the payment's optional. And a and there's going to be a term on it. It's going to re-amortize. And then a cash out refi, same thing. You're, you're going to introduce a payment. And a lot of times there's issues qualifying because, people are in retirement stages and they're not showing the income of a paycheck anymore. And a reverse is, even though there is a qualification process, we, we do what's called a financial assessment. You really just have to show the income to pay the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance. So we don't have to qualify you for a payment because there's not going to be a required payment. So, so apart, apart from selling the property, it would be what we would think of of traditional op options. You get a HELOC, you, you get a cash out refi. Those come with expenses. They come with different pay payments. There's obviously requirements on there. The, the reverse in my brain was always a simpler, easier, more understandable solution. Uh, but again, I, I've, I've read on them quite a bit. Don't feel like I'm an expert expert at all with them. So you know, how about for, for people out there that they're just starting to learn about it or look at it? Why don't you give us a, a high level view of the mechanics of a reverse mortgage? Sure. So the mechanics would be that you starting out, you would be over the age of, you would be 62 or older. And that's for the Heckam product, which is a home equity conversion mortgage. Um, and that's the FHA insured product. FAR does have some that are that start at age 55, some proprietary products. Um, but so 62 or older. And then you're going to want to have it, at least 50% equity in your home. And the older that you are, the more money you're going to be able to qualify or you're going to be able to tap into the more equity you're going to be able to access. So we keep a portion of that equity in reserves. So I shouldn't say we keep it's it's your equity, but it's set aside mm -hmm. so that to pay the taxes that not the taxes, the interest that's going to accrue on the loan over time. So the older you are, the term is probably going to be shorter. So there's less that needs to be set aside. You know, if that makes sense. Yep, completely. So the numbers in my head are 62 or older, at least 50% equity. The older you are, the more equity you can tap. Exactly. Yep. And you don't and, have to worry about payments or anything like that. And the payment's optional. So it's not required. You can make one. There's no prepayment penalty, but it's optional. And the really cool thing about it is the, so the money becomes available in a line of credit. So it's, it's, if you do the adjustable rate loan, it's, it's an open-ended loan. It's sitting in a line of credit. It's not part of the loan balance until you use it. And then one of the most incredible features on a reverse mortgage that not everybody knows about or understands is the line of credit growth. So this is one of the key differences too between a HELOC 
and a reverse mortgage is, so if you tap into $100,000 in equity and, and it's sitting in the line of credit through a reverse mortgage, that line of credit grows and compounds over time at the same rate that's attached to the loan. So if it's seven and a half percent, that's that's you know being tacked onto the loan balance. That hundred thousand would be growing at seven and a half percent as well. So you have growth on that money that you don't need. So it, that balance is getting larger over time, which is one of the reasons it's a good idea to implement a reverse earlier rather than later, because like most financial products, time is your friend, you know, and the more time that it's in place, the more you benefit for it being able to, to grow to a, a larger balance in the line of credit. And once it's in place, you're really not paying interest until you take money out. So if I just took five or $10,000 out, but then didn't take anything else out, my line keeps growing no matter what. Right, exactly. And if you wanted to make a payment to it, the it both reduces the loan balance and becomes immediately available again in the line of credit, which is great. I mean, think about our typical mortgage too. And there's such a large percentage of people, even in retirement, that are still carrying a mortgage, especially when we had that that set of low interest rates a few years ago, right? People are like refi, refi. Mm -hmm. And not everybody went to a shorter term, some increase. So if, if you were looking at eliminating that mortgage payment, you know, and, and, and paying that off and then having that, um, equity growing in the line of credit, you know, on the side, that's, that would be advantageous. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting product. I know when I originally started learning about it, my approach was I am a to understand this. Yeah. I, I felt that was important. So I didn't approach it of, you know, how do I feel about my clients accessing debt, borrowing against their home? I didn't, I didn't want to take the financial planner approach first. I wanted to take the fiduciary approach. This is a reasonable option. People are doing it out there. I need to know what it is. I need to have a conversation. So if someone asks me, I, I can't say, well, I don't do reverse mortgages. So, you know, I don't have a lot of help. I, I don't want to be that guy. Right. I love, sure I love I know it. Yeah, I love that. That's so important. And I, I wish more people took that approach to it. And then, it, or at the very least, if you don't know, just say you don't know, right? Too many people are still passing along, including banks, you know, financial institutions that they're not a good idea. And it's like, <laughs> you know, you can't really back that up with facts. If you ask someone to elaborate on that, usually they're going to say something wrong. You know, they're going to say something that is that is a myth. Right. Or they'll say, well, I knew a guy. Yeah. 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 So, My friend's brother's uncle said his yeah, parents did it yeah. and it was a bad idea. Yeah. I'm pretty sure research by anecdote isn't an approved process. <laughs> I haven't heard that, but I like that. So how about if uh, advisors are ready to, to do a due diligence tour? They need to put 30 minutes, 60 minutes into it. What's, what's the best way for advisors to learn more about this? So, well, we have a website, um, Home Equity U that they can go to. And we have some resources on there. We have a reverse calculator. Um, but honestly, the best thing I would say is reach out to myself uh, or Steve in our department because we're that's what we're here for. And there's nothing better than a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We also offer webinars every month. So if you don't want to directly interact, you kind of want to just take a back seat at first and, and hear somebody talk about it. Um, Steve shows some real life testimonials with clients um, as an advisor himself that he's used. So that's a pretty cool way to, to learn about it. And if you have a client where you go, what if, you know, I kind of thought like, let me just run the numbers on them. I feel like real life examples are, are always great. And we have an illustrator program where we plug those numbers in, hop on a Zoom and share with you like, hey, what's this look like in 10 years? What's it look like if the interest rate does this or the home appreciates at that? So that's that's a pretty powerful tool. All right. And what's the main website for that? That It's Home Equity U, which is, it's home. I'll, I'll just spell it out real quick. Right. It's kind of a tricky one. H-O-M-E, equity, E-Q-U-I-T-Y, and then just the letter U.com. Yeah. Easy enough. That's great. I hope a lot of advisors go check it out. We need to be uh, uh, versed on this. Got to understand it as a fiduciary. That's at least my opinion. And uh, well, I like sharing my opinion, so I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> I so, agree with you, Ross. There we go. Gabrielle, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening to Shift with Ross Marino. Please visit humanfirst.live to learn more. This show is for general information purposes only and is not intended to provide recommendations or advice. Speak with a legal, tax, or financial advisor before making any decisions. Past performance references are historical and do not guarantee future results.